as our Charles defends his NBA heavyweight title against former world champion Joe Lewis in a bid for undisputed recognition. New York, 27th of September, 1950. You're going to see the famous Joe Lewis in his famous fighting style and an Ezra Charles who is a cobra and a striking puncher with hand always held high. Well, there's a different Lewis. He's not out to counter punch, he's out to end it. 36 years of age, his opponent 29. Lewis with his back to you. Ezard Charles, easily identifiable with the stripe, the white stripe down his trunks. Two minutes to go of the first round and there's excitement and action. A goodly crowd here tonight. This is a Lewis who constantly stalks as you know. Charles has Joe's nose just slightly colored but Joe is in at a punch. Thirty-three pounds difference in favor of Lewis. Two hundred and eighteen to one hundred and eighty-four and a half. Notice how Charles keeps that right high up to his chin to shoot it out in case he has to. Crafty, agile, excellent boxer. One minute to go, first round. Joe tried for the punch that time. They may talk about Lewis's reflexes being slow, but his punch is still there. Half a minute to go of the first round. Although Charles is considered rather light for a heavyweight at his weight of 184 and a half. Remember that Bob Fitzsimmons weighed 156 and a half for his championship fight with Jim Corbett back in 1897. Now as we follow Lewis back to his corner, the crowd roared for the exciting action of the first round. Round two. And we'll see what's going to happen. Comments around here indicate they're all waiting to see what's going to happen. Both, both with those beautiful lefts. One off a counter by Charles, which is unusual. And now they're punching. Sentimental crowd with Joe Lewis and delighted that he is forcing fighting rather than waiting for the counter punching. And Charles hitting. I think the exciting comment is that Ezra Charles does not seem the least bit frightened of Joe Lewis's great prowess. the first of the combinations that worked and Lewis landed that right hand with two minutes to go of round two. Lewis seems much younger than his 36 years the way he's going in these first two rounds. I don't know what his plan of action is but it certainly has proven that he wants to get out and end it as fast as he can.
Many years ago in the Billy Kahn fight, Lewis said, I'll box him and then knock him out. He's boxing Ezra Charles Knight. They are punching each other, and the blows are telling in their landing. One minute to go of the second round. And the crowd likes this one because this is really a good fight. Charles hasn't uh, changed his style. He's beating Lewis a bit to the punches. Half a minute to go of the second round, and most everyone is now on the edge of their seats. They didn't quite expect it to be this good so early. They're talking up around the ringside. The comments are all indicating exactly as we're passing it on to you. The round is almost over. And there it is, the bell ending round two. Here we go, round three. Lewis imperturbable. Charles exactly the same, but always willing to lead. Despite the craftiness and the agile and the fluency, or the agility and the fluency, Charles is constantly wary of the devastating power of the Joe Lewis punch. These excellent pictures show you that Charles is able to reach Joe, and Joe is looking for that tag. Two minutes to go, round three. There it is, there it is. An almost slip by Charles that time, and the crowd saw it, but Joe delayed. Superb fighting machine that has been Joe Lewis is superb again tonight. Charles slowing just a bit now in his actions. Remember that no heavyweight champion has ever regained his title, although in this case, Joe Lewis gave it away, didn't lose it in the ring, yet no heavyweight champion has ever won it back again. Charles is matching them with him now. One minute to go, round three. Joe's face is just a bit redder than it was when he came into the ring from those left hooks that flick out and land and the rights that cross over. But Joe dramatically always moving in, always moving in. Excellent to see them not flinching, always breaking their own flinches. Half a minute to go, third round. Joe Lewis, Ezard Charles. Charles is willing to bury his leaves, left or right as the case may be. He loves to hit with that right. There's the end of round three. Well, the pattern of the fight hasn't changed. Lewis, 33 and a half pounds heavier, seven years older. Cincinnati Cobra keeps moving in at him. There's Lewis, out of the left, then the right, in case you missed it. 
and the crowd roared for Lewis struck out like the Cobra that Charles is reputed to be two minutes to go the fourth round startled but not hurt Charles maintains his poise Joe's always looking for that opening. Most of the fight experts felt that Charles would cut Joe Lewis. But there are no marks on either fighter. That's the first indication that Charles was backing up and backing up cautiously. One minute to go of the fourth round. There's Joe Lewis striking out now. Crowd groans when Joe holds back with an opening quite apparent to everyone. It's a different Joe Lewis missing three blows in a row. Half a minute to go of the fourth round. Joe looks more severe than I've seen him in the whole fight. His reflexes worked. See him dance away that time on the feint? Charles perceptibly seems tired. That is, tired of taking a punishment. The round's almost over. You'll hear Joe Bannon ring the bell. And that ends the fourth round. In round five. Charles always seems stronger in the first minute and a half of any round. And something seems to uh, set him back so that he can look Joe over to see perhaps what damage he's done, if any. And there he is. Throwing those blows. And he's connecting with Joe, but not too cleanly. He hasn't got the solid punch that we know Joe has or had. But he mixes. Two minutes to go in round number five. Ezra Charles with the lighter stripe down his trunks. Now as we notice, the round is half over and Charles begins to slow down. Now, whether he's looking to see what's going on or what to do about his patterns, I don't know. But Lewis has his combinations working when they're working, and he's willing to set them in. Charles has been striking the cleaner blows this round, and Lewis's have been glancing. Neither boy is marked. One minute to go of round five. Big thing, the big thing I'm looking for is to see whether Lewis slows down, whether he gets down off his heels and stays down, even in that famous plotting style. The first indication that age may be taking its toll. Continues to stalk. The round is almost over. And show almost connected. Just as round five ended. Here we have Lewis out of retirement. Fighting the NBA heavyweight champion. Joe Lewis, the undefeated former heavyweight champion of the world. Trying to do what no man before him has done. Win back his title. And now he's aggressive. As he's meeting a very aggressive, lighter opponent. The 
Pattern has changed a bit now. Now in close, I see that Lewis is beginning to develop a mouse under his left eye. Yes, there it is, quite apparent. No obvious markings on Charles. Two minutes to go in the sixth round. Joe's beginning to breathe a bit now. Close here at the ringside, we can see that. Now, Mark Kahn constantly staying out of the way. Has very little to do as the third man in the ring. Both these boys, superbly clean fighters. The pattern has changed enough so that we see a mauling round now instead of the long distance clean fighting. And amazingly, Charles is willing to stay in with Joe Lewis. Now let's see. Lewis I, Lewis, I think, has perceptibly slowed down, but Charles has, in a sense, too. One minute ago of the sixth round of the heavyweight championship out here at Yankee Stadium in New York City. Well, here they are right over our microphone. And the exchanges are terrifying. Joe's willing to strike, but he's missing. And the lighter opponent wrestled him away that time. Half a minute to go of the sixth round, and Charles is dropping his right hand, which normally he keeps very high as protection. That may be an indication. Joe's noticed it. Round is almost over. Here we go for round seven. One other observation. I noticed that uh, Lewis didn't like the feel of the ice pack on his eye. And now you see Charles is striking for that eye. There's the pattern for this round. There he goes, hitting in there constantly. And Lewis's eye is beginning to develop a tremendous closing. It's almost an aperture now, slip. So we always have the spectacle of the Lewis that we knew with that tremendous right, and there he threw it, and the constant application of good blows with craftiness and agility and fluency by Ezra Charles. Two minutes to go in the seventh round of the heavyweight championship out here at Yankee Stadium in New York. A goodly crowd on hand and giving generous applause to all the exchanges. The picture reveals now the boys are going into the milling style for the round you see is almost half over. And Charles willingly steps away to watch what Joe Lewis will do. Joe for a second there had Charles in trouble but Charles weaves out of it. I think Charles has developed a mouse under his left eye, too. So they both have slightly closing left eyes. So they'll both be fighting with one eye. So it's right hand hitting to right hand. One minute to go in the seventh round. Of course, what Lewis wants is Charles to come in close as he slows him down. Half a minute to go, and the crowd anticipated that was it, but Joe missed both shots. Joe keeps Charles in close. Well, what the two questions were, can the old man of 36, and I use the word old advisedly, and how good is Ezra Charles, the question is being answered almost halfway through the fight. Round seven is almost over, and there's the bell. 
so far it's been the perfect fight. There's Charles with that speed, the rapier stuff, in the first minute and a half of each round. He has excellent recuperative powers in between the rounds, and it keeps him moving for at least a minute and a half. There's Joe. Now counter-punching. Two minutes to go of the eighth round of this 15-round heavyweight championship bout here at the Yankee Stadium in New York. Charles continues to pummel away in that first minute and a half, always keeping Joe at a disadvantage, and then suddenly Joe seems to have the weight to put into Charles. So far, he hasn't leaned that weight on Charles during the fight. Charles has been fighting with the greater severity and a greater amount of punching ability in this round than he has in any previous round, so perhaps that remark I made about his recuperative powers stands in good stead. One minute remains of round eight, and Joe Lewis is beginning to slow down a little bit as Charles keeps punching away, and he's brought a slight touch, I think, of a fatigue look to Joe's face and just the slightest touch of claret to his nose. So the Cincinnati Cobra is fighting for the face, fighting as he planned to fight to cut Joe Lewis up and slow him down on account of his years. And so perhaps we're seeing in this half minute remaining of the eighth round, the best of the ability of Ezra Charles, which may answer one of the questions. How good is he? The other one has yet to be answered. Can Joe come back? Round is almost over and Joe keeps stalking as he does right up to the bell. Shooting the short ones inside now and they have a telling effect on Ezra Charles who evidently senses the round is at an end. Round nine. Charles up on his toes, Joe Lewis back down on his heels now. Joe Lewis superbly conditioned, he had to be for this kind of a fight. The two right hands that Charles put in were the toughest two of the fight. Joe just remained erect. Two hardest, of course, by Charles. Joe put one in early in the second round, you'll remember. But he's scoring his punches at will now in the first minute and a half of this big round. Two minutes to go in this round. Charles scoring with telling punches. Joe watching, never closing his eyes when the punch comes at him. One of the great attributes to his fighting ability. Joe is now bleeding and suddenly had a look of uh, that tired feeling on his face. Perhaps just remarshalling his forces. But the fight is now going to the pattern the experts declared would be. And now the punches are coming at will. As Charles watches to see what he can do with Lewis and punches to prove it. The greatest of the great champions with his record in the record book and the youthful aspirant to the undisputed world heavyweight town crown. One minute to go this round. There he is, Joe Lewis at 36, as it Charles at 29 years of age. Bob Fitzsimmons was 37 years old when in his first title defense he was knocked out by Jim Jeffries. Fitz, however, was 52 years old when he fought his last battle back in 1914. So we'll bring the age question to you as Charles keeps pouring it in. Starting to mangle Joe Lewis's face now. 
And Joe Lewis has brought a tremendous rush of claret from the nose of Ezra Charles. He got one in close there. It was a left uppercut. The round is almost over, some 15 seconds to go. And that was Joe Lewis getting in one of his telling punches. Charles wiping the blood away. It was a beautiful left just a moment ago. The round is almost over. Round 10 coming up. Claret has come quickly again from Charles's nose. It's his right nostril, and Joe keeps banging away with that left. Now you have Ezra Charles leashing and lashing. How much effect a bleeding nose will have on a fighter? I don't know. It's an annoyance, undeniably, and causes motions with the hands which should be held. So it may be that the bridge of that nose has been badly damaged. It appears that way. Joe is working on him, and Joe with a counter that time almost caught him. Two minutes to go of the 10th round. And if anything, Joe seems to be stronger now with the advantage of having hurt his opponent. So both, because their heads are banging together, are covered with just a bit of blood. Joe is now stalking. The sight of the blood has enraged him. The crowd senses that he's after him, and that's why you hear the roar in the background. The cameras go up. Charles backing away. Joe goes in. Left eye closed, the nostril breathing. That's why he's backing up. Joe is after him. Joe Lewis now stalking his prey. Waiting to work those combinations off the left. In close then, the camera couldn't reveal it. A terrific short right. It landed on the button of Ezra Charles, and he's bleeding more profusely. Joe's best round now, and the crowd roaring with it. One minute to go of the 10th round. Knees buckling slightly as a Charles back against the ropes that time. Joe constantly looking for that opening. This is the drama. This is where what you see tells you what you want to see. Charles beautifully spinning Joe Lewis around when in trouble. Half a minute to go, the 10th round. Joe Lewis showing his best. Almost 30 minutes after the fight began. So the question of 36 years of age seems to be disproven at this moment. Charles lashing back as best he can and yet showing that agility and flexibility and the fluency as the round is almost over. And they'll have to work on him and work on him hard in this corner. Here's the bell. Listen to that roar. And here we come to round 11. Like all crowds, what's gone before means nothing in the memory of what Joe did in that last round. That Charles fights back. He's certainly a match for Joe tonight. No matter the outcome, he's giving Joe a good battle. There is something that may be an indication of the end. As Joe put in a powerful punch to the body, he took two or three counter punches two rights that were uh, sort of loosely set to the head so that as a Charles was not disturbed and was willing to flail back. A left uppercut that time by Charles slowed Joe down. Two minutes to go in the 11th round in what has been a good fight. And that's not giving expletives away either. Now the minute and a half of the round has gone by, and we'll have to see whether or not this is where Charles will step backwards and allow Joe to come to him. Joe will lead and Joe will counter, and this is an unusual procedure. 
Joe's best weapon is left hook. As are Charles, that best weapon being a left, but a following straight right, whistling for the jaw. Those who have missed this fight, I think, have missed something. One minute to go of the 11th round. And the procedure remains the same. Procedural-wise, Charles lets it slow down. Gets to his corner and takes that recuperation. Joe's eye, his left eye is almost closed. In fact, it is, you might as well say. He has a difficult time opening it. As it, Charles' left eye is also closed. Now the blood is not flowing as it was earlier. Isn't it wonderful, in a sense, to realize that a man 33 pounds less will spin the heavyweight champion around on occasions? Condition is certainly something of a great asset here because you see Charles lashing back now after the damage of the last round. And this round is almost at an end. It'll be the 11th round, the end of it. And much to talk about and much to figure. We'll wait for the bell. Well, there it is, the bell ending the 11th round. This is the slowest of the first few seconds action of any round. There's Charles starting his leads now. That's the first round I've seen him go to work at the body. Both boys completely blinded in their left eyes. Attesting to the punching power of both. Both will keep punching away at those eyes. Well, there's the cleanest shot of the fight you've seen with Joe's head snapping back, a long right-hander. Joe is perceptibly slowing down, but still he has that powerful punch. Two minutes to go in this round. Round 12 of a 15-rounder. The action has slowed down a bit, but certainly the stirring quality of the fight hasn't. And as I've said, it's a credit to the superbly conditioned Charles because he's weathered the blows and he's still willing to mix it in there with a dangerous puncher like Joe Lewis, who himself is in superb fighting condition. So their equipment is exactly the same and the damage is exactly the same. One minute to go of the 12th round. And so far, I would presume the slowest round of the fight. And it should be, from the pace these boys have kept. Joe looking for the opening, looking for the opening. Every now and then, seeing it, I think. We're looking to see exactly what damage is being done so that we can pass it on to you. This is a round where both boys, I think, are cautious and wary, looking for the spurt to the finish. A half a minute to go of round 12. And so far, a fight both boys can be very well proud of. Patterns change again. Lewis willing to lead if he can get close. Both eyes, both fighters, the left eyes completely closed. Inside the 10 second uh, set to now. Charles striking out, scores heavily. And there's the bell, ending the 12th round. So we'll look ahead to round 13 and here they go. Charles again back in the original pattern despite the fact that his nose always draws Claret from Joe's left. He's out springing around to start the round. Throughout the fight, I think the indication that Charles is willing to mix it with Joe has been one of the astounding features. Joe always willing to move in. Now the drama rap represents itself again. How well, how well can Ezra Charles fight? Well, that's been proven up to this point. The question now, the other half remains, can Joe come back? 
two minutes to go of the 13th round. The round with the hard luck number. Both boys are slipping on their punches. They're not hitting as heavily as before, and yet they're punching. senses that Joe wants it but the round is almost over one minute to go Now we're beginning to see the plotting cannonading. Half a minute to go. 13th round. There's the end of the round. Round 13, the crowd liked that one. Round 14. Retaliatory measures now. Joe Luz is bleeding rather profusely from his nostrils. It's a milling fight now, if the word milling can be used. Two minutes to go of the 14th round. eyes went slightly glazy on that one as if he were tired. Joe is tired against the ropes. He looks as if that eye is paining him and it is. It's completely closed. Has been for quite some time. But instinctively Joe fights. Right now, this is Charles' best opportunity, so watch it. Now the comment around the ringside is, stay away, Joe, stay away, Joe. I guess you know the dramatic quality of that. Half a minute to go of the 14th round. The Cincinnati Cobra, still springy, Joe plotting. Well, there's the bell ending round 14, and both blows were struck after the bell. Joe Lewis with a right, and a retaliatory right from Ezra Charles. Well, the next round is the big round.
In a similar situation, Walcott once did a very damaging thing when he lost the disputed decision. But here it is, Ezra Charles fighting. Superbly conditioned, having taken the best of Joe Lewis's blows, as a Charles still on his feet, driving. Lewis realizing, fighting with the great instinct of a champion. A very telling right hand by Charles that time. The round half over. And a good crowd here at Yankee Stadium sitting in on what has been an excellent bout. willing to wrap up a fight because he thinks he has it won. Joe Lewis ready to slip behind with 50 seconds to go. Intense drama. Charles constantly flecking away, striking heavy blows at Joe Lewis. Half minute to go of the fight. seconds to go and Charles still belting away. The fight's gone all the way and an era ends as the bell sounds and the crowd roars its great approval. Judge Joe Agnello scores it 12 to 3 favor of Charles. Judge Frank Forbes scores it 13 to 2, favor of Charles. Referee Mark Khan, 10 to 5, favor of Charles. Winner by unanimous decision and heavyweight champion of the world, Ezra Charles.